good afternoon. Let me present my PhD topic with the title New Insight in Cohexia Prevention in Gastrointestinal Cancer. My name is Bettina Budai, I am a first year PhD student and a dietitian. My vision is that nutrition is a cornerstone in the multimodal care of all cancer patients. And my mission is to carry out scientific activity to bring innovation in the nutrition therapy of cancer. I have two specific goals. I would like to investigate the risk factors for malnutrition in patients with gastrointestinal cancer and to investigate the effect of amino acid supplementation in gastrointestinal cancer patients. Let me introduce my first project. The prevalence of malnutrition in gastrointestinal cancer is up to 30 to 90 percent, depending on the tumor site and tumor stage. The definition of malnutrition means an altered body composition due to inadequate nutritional intake. It means a negative energy balance parallel with inflammatory activity, and it has a great negative effect of the cancer and anti-cancer therapies. The development of malnutrition is multifactorial. That means that there are various risk factors that can contribute to its development. Moreover, the mechanisms has been incompletely elucidated. So our aim was to investigate the risk factors for malnutrition in gastrointestinal cancer. We created the clinical question, what are the risk factors for malnutrition in patients with gastrointestinal cancer? We investigated patients with gastrointestinal cancer. Exposure could be any risk factors, like the tumor stage, the presence of metastasis, the presence of comorbidities, or the serum albumin level. Outcome was malnutrition. We hypothesized that risk of malnutrition development is increased by specific clinical and biological factors. We conducted the systematic search in three databases. We have done the selection. Some part of it is still ongoing, but till that time, we identified more than 200 eligible articles. I would like to show you some preliminary results. We investigated pancreatic cancer patients and their risk factors that can increase the development of impaired nutritional status. The first risk factor is biliary obstruction. In case of biliary obstruction, there is two times higher odds for developing impaired nutritional status. The result is statistically significant. The explanation of it is because of the biliary obstruction, there is a prevention of the flow of the bile into the duodenum that can lead malabsorption and malnutrition as well. We also evaluated the tumor location. We can see a tendency that in case of the tumor located in the pancreatic head, there is 30% higher odds for developing impaired nutritional status compared with, those, uh, with, uh, with a tumor located in the body or tail of the pancreas. Although the result isn't statistically significant, it's clinically relevant. We also investigated the type of the surgery. Patients who should undergo pancreatic odonectomy has two times higher odds for developing impaired nutritional status compared with those patients who should undergo left resection or distal pancreatectomy. This result related to our previous one, because in case of the tumor located in the pancreatic head, the proper surgical approach that should be administered is the pancreatic odonectomy. We also investigated the presence or absence of metastasis. In case of metastasis, there is 80% higher odds for developing impaired nutritional status. Of course, it was an expected result, because in case of metastasis, we can talk about an advanced cancer stage with hypercatabolic state that can easily lead to malnutrition. We wanted to examine the association between performance status and nutritional status. There is statistically significant higher odds for developing impaired nutritional status in case of the ECOG score is more than two. It was also an expected result because patients with this ECOG number has most of the cases in advanced cancer stage. We evaluated other risk factors during the analysis. We compared BMI more than 25 with those less than 25. That means that we compared patient, obese or overweight patients with those who are underweight or normal weight. From this result, we cannot draw a very clear conclusion that highlights the fact that BMI is not the proper tool for reporting nutritional status. 
We also investigated the presence of comorbidities, like the diabetes mellitus or hypertension. There is a clinically relevant point estimation for odds ratio for developing impaired nutritional status in case of diabetes mellitus or hypertension. We evaluated the sex as a risk factor, but in this case, we haven't found any clinically or statistically relevant results. The strengths of our meta-analysis is the transparent methodology, the large patient's number that we could examine more than 18,000 patients, and the various cancer-specific risk factors. The limitations are that most of the studies, retrospective cohort or observational studies, and the heterogeneity in the population and in the definition of impaired nutritional status. In conclusion, we can say that there are risk factors for impaired nutritional status in pancreatic cancer patients. Knowing these risk factors, we can early detect the patients who are at high risk for developing it, and we can get the opportunity for the proper interventions in time. Moreover, these risk factors can be included in the risk screening tools, especially in pancreatic cancer. As a research implication, we can investigate the mechanisms for increased risk for malnutrition, especially in pancreatic head tumor location. This is our progress. We are working on the data extraction and risk of bias assessment of those articles that were identified during the citation chasing. In my second project, I would like to investigate the effect of amino acid supplementation in gastrointestinal cancer patients. At the diagnosis, all patients have to be screened for malnutrition and offer nutritional support as needed. The presence of malnutrition in patients who should undergo oncological treatment can increase the toxicity and decrease the performance status, quality of life, treatment response, and overall survival. There are contradictory data regarding the proper use of amino acid supplementation in cancer patients. Some data suggest to use branched-chain amino acids to improve the fat-free mass, and some suggest to use glutamine to prevent mucositis. So our aim is to evaluate the efficacy of amino acid supplementation in gastrointestinal cancer. The clinical question is, what is the efficacy of amino acid supplementation in GI cancer patients? We are going to investigate patients with gastrointestinal cancer. Intervention is going to be the amino acid supplementation, outcome nutritional status, quality of life, and survival. We hypothesize that amino acid supplementation can improve nutritional status and quality of life, but doesn't improve prognosis in patients with gastrointestinal cancer. The clinical implication is that with the uh, is the proper use and proper indication of amino acid supplementation in GI cancer patients. As a summary, I would like to highlight the planned submission date for the first project is this year June, and for the second project this year September. And I would like to thank you for your attention with this quote. Impossible only means that you haven't found a solution yet. Thank you. What was the exact definition on um, impaired nutritional status? And did you analyze sarcopenia? Thank you for the question. We only included articles that define the impaired nutritional status according to nutritional, validated nutri nutritional risk screening tools or according to a guideline. And uh, that's why we, uh, haven't, uh, we haven't put uh, articles that only examine the sarcopenia. This is going to be one of our uh, exposure in this analysis. But we concentrated only uh, for, uh, about for the malnutrition and the cohexia. And can you comment on the definition? Um, yes. <laughs> um, so. The so the malnutrition is uh, assessed by uh, risk screening tools like the mass universal uh, screening tools, or uh, there are some new ones, for example, the geriatric nutritional risk uh, screening tools. And we can talk about encohexia when there is uh, also the decreasing in the muscle function as well, and uh, decreasing in the uh, muscle mass. But uh, sarcopenia is not the synonym of the cohexia, and that's why we, we haven't put it in it.
I have a question that you were talking about in, the, in your first project about the localization, that head, body, or something. Are we talking about GI tumors, cancers, or, or ev every type of cancer, every region of so, cancers? So uh, we, we analyzed all of the GI cancer, but what I have shown is uh, only preliminary re data regarding the pancreatic cancer patients. So we can say that this is a subgroup of sub the Subgroup analysis. analysis uh -huh. yes. And you differ, for example, the uh, pancreatic cancer or biliary cancer and the intestinal cancer? Yes, this is the plan. And of course, after we are ready with the whole data extraction, we are going to have a, a discussion with an oncological specialist to, to have a discussion how it is worth to, to analyze this the most effective way. Uh, I just um, want to ask regarding the second project, were you able to find in preliminary search uh, randomized control trials on this topic? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, most of the studies uh, are randomized control trials in the second project. And do you want to include only randomized control trials or also different study design? I think we will see uh, how many articles we have exactly and then we can decide this question.